every hormone, every organ, every function, this could be one of the most important peptide complexes ever discovered. It has the potential to benefit every single organ and every single system in your body. It even has the potential to change how we as a species approach hormone optimization. How is that possible? Because it works on one of the most important glands in the brain, the pituitary gland, the master control center for our hormones. Until now, nobody has ever extracted peptides specifically from the pituitary gland. This is the first time it's ever been done and turned into a product for public use. And with our work at the Peptide Science Institute, this is the first time anyone has revealed data regarding its contents. This is the peptide that nobody is talking about, but everyone needs to know. This peptide is called endocrine. It's the first ever peptide extract derived directly from the pituitary gland, the brain's command center for your entire endocrine system. Now, remarkably, peptide extracts from animal organs have been around for decades. We've even had peptides specifically derived from the brain, including Celex, Cerebrolysin, Serlutin, and Cortexin, each valuable in unique ways. But here's the issue. Most of these peptides have treated the brain like one big lump, with the exception of Cortexin, which is a little bit more specific to the cortex. No distinction between the hippocampus, pons, temporal lobe, or pituitary. Just chopped, blended, and extracted without isolating specific regions. And that's the problem. Because while these structures may look similar under a microscope, they carry out radically different functions. And to this day, the brain remains one of the least understood systems in biology. Yet among its many parts, one tiny structure stands out, the pituitary gland. It's small, but it's vital. It orchestrates hormone release across your entire body. It's the gatekeeper of growth, metabolism, reproduction, stress response, and more. An endocrine by Vitastream is the first peptide extract ever created from this structure. So what exactly does the pituitary do? The pituitary gland is a tiny but critically important endocrine gland housed just beneath the hypothalamus at the base of the brain. It has two major divisions, the anterior pituitary, which produces thyroid stimulating hormone, adrenocorticotropic hormone, luteinizing hormone, follicle stimulating hormone, growth hormone, and prolactin. The posterior pituitary, which stores and releases antidiuretic hormone and oxytocin, which are both synthesized in the hypothalamus. Together, these two halves regulate virtually every system that keeps you alive and functioning. Stress response, growth, sexual function, reproduction, lactation, metabolism, emotional balance, water retention. Without the pituitary, life itself wouldn't be possible. And endocrine is not just a step forward, it's a breakthrough. Check the link in the description to order yours now, and use the exclusive discount code while it's still available. Now, most so-called peptide experts don't know this. In fact, I've never heard a single one mention it before. But Professor Vladimir Kovinson, the pioneer behind the original organ-derived peptide extracts known as the cytomaxes, actually tried to create a hypothalamic extract. It was back in the 1980s. That's right, it was one of his first peptide experiments. But it didn't work out. Not because the peptides weren't active. They were. The problem was measurement. You see, with the thymus, you can track immune markers like T-cell counts. With the pineal gland, you can measure melatonin or AANAT enzyme activity. There are clean, quantifiable outputs, but the hypothalamus? That's a different beast. It regulates temperature, hunger, sexual drive, circadian rhythms, hormone release, stress, emotions, basically every survival instinct you've got. Too many overlapping systems, too many variables, no clear biomarker to test. So despite Covenson's best efforts, the hypothalamus extract was shelved. But that led to something greater. Vitastream took a more targeted approach. They honed in on a smaller, more focused structure, the pituitary gland. And that's where endocrine was born. The idea of creating a pituitary-derived peptide extract is nothing short of revolutionary. Now let me be fully transparent with you. Endocrine does not have formal clinical trials yet. There are no randomized controlled studies, no published animal models, not even rodent data, yet. But that doesn't mean we're flying blind. At the Peptide Science Institute, we've been conducting active research on endocrine's composition and effects. We ran mass spectrometry to map out the entire peptide profile, and what we found was shocking. Endocrine contains peptides that other experts would swear are organ-specific. We're talking epitalin, which is widely known as a pineal peptide, and testogen, a peptide classically associated with testicular regulation. Yet both are present in this pituitary extract, and they're not alone. We've identified 42 peptides in total, each under 500 Daltons, perfectly sized for biological signaling. Some are well-characterized, 
Others are cryptic, novel fragments never described before in the literature. However, when we put endocrine to the test in the real world, we're already seeing real results. Anecdotal reports are coming in from users across the board, and the early feedback has been extremely positive. A number of users, including myself, have reported two consistent effects after using endocrine, deeper sleep and reduced anxiety. So what's the mechanism? While the improved sleep could be explained in part by the presence of epitalin, a peptide in the pineal gland which regulates the synthesis of melatonin from serotonin and N-acetylserotonin, the anxiolysis typically suggests one thing, an upregulation of GABAergic signaling, the primary inhibitory pathway in the brain. That's one possibility. There are others too, like modulation of melanin concentrating hormone receptors or even serotonin reuptake inhibition. But with endocrine, the most likely explanation is a boost in growth hormone release from the anterior pituitary. Why does that matter? Because growth hormone doesn't just repair tissue, it remodels your sleep architecture. It deepens slow wave sleep, the most restorative stage, and it may even enhance REM, where emotional processing and memory integration happen. And I've personally felt this, a feeling of being actually rested, not just knocked out. That effect has shown up again and again across dozens of real-world users, and when you see the same pattern repeated many times, you don't ignore it. A growth hormone contributes to immune function, deep sleep, cardiovascular health, bone density, skin and collagen repair, joint and tendon healing, and improved body composition over time. However, it declines with age, which is why sometimes biohackers use peptides to increase growth hormone release, or they just use growth hormone replacement therapy. I've personally used them all. MK677, GHRP6, Ipamorelin, Tessamorelin, Sarmorelin, and even high-quality pharmaceutical-grade growth hormone. I know what they feel like and how they all work. But if I had to choose just one, I'd take Endocrine every single time, because it delivers a more complete, cleaner, and more natural restoration of pituitary functions all across the board. With Endocrine, I recovered faster from workouts, I slept deeper, and just felt better overall. And unlike various drugs that cease to provide effects after discontinuation, I kept feeling good even after I stopped taking endocrine. It was like achieving a slightly higher baseline, and that kind of persistent change is rare, and suggests it is providing an actual rejuvenation of the pituitary itself, with ripple effects across the entire endocrine system. Another effect reported by a few users is a modest increase in appetite. Mechanistically, this may be explained by enhanced anterior pituitary output, particularly with thyroid-stimulating hormone and growth hormone. Increased thyroid-stimulating hormone stimulates higher thyroxine, otherwise known as T4, production by the thyroid, which elevates metabolic rate and can naturally lead to a stronger appetite if enough of it is converting into active T3. Now, growth hormone also increases nutrient turnover and may contribute to a greater energy demand, indirectly enhancing hunger. Later, when we analyzed Endocrine's peptide composition, we found something that supported this effect. The presence of peptides historically associated with thyroid stimulation, including epitalin and testogen, which in prior animal models where the hypothalamus was surgically removed, both peptides were shown to increase thyroid stimulating hormone and thyroid hormone output. This suggests a possible application for individuals with subclinical hypothyroidism or a TSH level above 2.5 which is a range no longer considered to be optimal. Endocrine appears to tap into both the hypothalamic adrenal and hypothalamic gonadal axes, the core stress and reproductive circuits. Some users are reporting a noticeable increase in libido, and mechanistically, that makes perfect sense. The pituitary directly supports the testes through luteinizing hormone and follicle-stimulating hormone. But that's not the whole story. When we analyzed Endocrine's peptide composition, we found it contained two very specific peptides that explain this perfectly. Epitalin, a pineal-derived regulator, and testogen, classically associated with testicular function. Now, epitalin's presence is especially interesting because even though it's known as a pineal peptide, epitalin influences the medial preoptic area of the hypothalamus, a region that governs autonomic regulation, circadian rhythm, stress response, and yes, libido. But it gets even more interesting. When we ran mass spectrometry across all 21 Covington's peptide complexes, we found epitalin in the pineal gland, of course, but also in the testes and the bladder. So much for being tissue-specific, right? But biologically, it makes complete sense. The pineal gland is upstream of the pituitary gonadal axis. It regulates timing signals that feed directly into reproductive hormone output. So finding one of its key peptides like epitalin in multiple endocrine and reproductive tissues isn't surprising. 
and reflects a conserved evolutionary architecture built around hormonal coordination. Now, if you want to go deeper into how epitalin works, you can check out my video on my channel. It's still the most advanced breakdown of epitalin available anywhere, but to be honest, it doesn't even scratch the surface of what I reveal in my book, Peptide Salvation. That book is my free gift to you, and it goes way beyond the surface level stuff that gets recycled online. So if you're serious about peptides, please take advantage of this completely free offer. Another surprising finding is while testogen is often referred to as the testicular bioregulator, it was not detected in testolutin, the very complex marketed for testes function. Instead, we found it only in endocron, the pituitary extract. At first glance, this challenges the idea of organ-specific peptides. But when you look at the science, it actually makes a lot of sense. In the literature, testogen and epitalin have been shown to restore thyroid hormone output in chickens whose pituitary glands have been surgically removed. Specifically, it increased levels of TSH, T3, and T4, and reversed atrophic changes in the thyroid gland. Therefore, these peptides are not strictly organ-specific, and the pituitary doesn't operate in isolation and neither does any region of the brain. The brain functions as a highly integrated network, where regions constantly influence one another through neural projections, local neurotransmitter signaling, hormone release into the bloodstream, or diffusion of endogenous peptides across adjacent structures. A peptide produced in one area can exert effects far beyond its origin, either by traveling to distant targets or by influencing neighboring circuits through volume transmission or passive diffusion. This is why targeting a single gland, like the pituitary, with a well-characterized extract like endocrine can have ripple effects throughout the entire neuroendocrine axis. And it also explains why pineal-derived peptides like epitalin can enhance pituitary responsiveness because they're operating upstream in the chain of command optimizing signals that regulate the very output of the pituitary itself. In conclusion, endocrine represents the next frontier of bioregulation, the first ever extract derived specifically from the pituitary gland. Although clinical trials are still lacking, the biological logic, mass spectrometry data, and real-world outcomes all align. This compound really works, and it has the potential to reshape just how we approach hormone optimization, stress recovery, and systemic repair from the top down. But here's the deeper truth. This isn't just about endocrine, it's about a shift in the entire paradigm. For too long, we've relied on blunt force hormone replacement therapies, ignoring the complex command centers that actually run the system. Endocrine speaks directly to those control hubs. It's not a replacement, but it's actual restoration. It's precisely coded biological messaging for your entire endocrine system, finally decoded and made available for you right now. And it's just the beginning. If you want to get endocrine, check the link in the description and use our code for a discount. And if you haven't got our book, Peptide Salvation, check the link in the description. It is my free gift to you, because you deserve to know the truth about peptides. This has been Brendan Henry, one of the founders of the Peptide Science Institute, and thank you for watching.